What's going on everybody? So today in this video, we're gonna be going through building out advanced time interval reporting for, in this case, we're gonna use the example of your employees as well as your whole business in Airtable. This is gonna be keeping track of a log to show transactions over time, we'll think of it as. So if you're interested, that stick around. If you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS. We help businesses build out reporting systems like this all the time. Anything in Airtable, connecting it with Zapier or make.com, building interfaces that kind of sit on top of Airtable or connecting it with tools like Softer or Stacker. So if you're interested in working with us, you can click the link in the description. Without further ado, we'll jump right into the video now. So what we're gonna be going through first is just a high level overview of what we have so far. And I wanna shout out Camille Parks. She built this template database. I think it's in the Airtable universe. Uh, she's great at building these things and coming up with these ideas. And we're gonna take it to the next level by doing even more advanced reporting with this. So the core concept is we have a, maybe similar to you, you have a table of transactions or maybe a table of new customers and you want to aggregate that data using buckets of time. So in this case, the key, the key thing to start off all of this is we have a date field. We have this date field that we're gonna convert into years, quarters, months, and weeks, and then show reporting based on that for the whole business as well as by employee. So yeah, we have a date field, we have an employee. That gets rolled up into this formula here which converts this date into the year of that date, the quarter, the month, and the week. And the idea is when you set a date like let's say I set the 17th on this, there would be an automation that would take this, the value in this field and automatically link it there. So when you copy a comma separated list and paste it into a linked record field, it automatically creates one record. If the t other table is set up right, it creates one record for each item in the list that's comma separated. So in the reports table, this is what it looks like over here. You can see we have this already broken out into months, quarters, weeks, and years. And all of this is gonna to have to change just a little bit to make it work well, but that's where, what we're gonna go through now. So let's jump back to the log table. And also there'll be a link to this base in the description, but if you want to try it out, you can go find this. Or we'll, I'll put a link to the final version of this base in the description. If you wanna follow along, you can go to the Airtable universe. It should be called this simple time interval reporting. So the first thing we're gonna to have to do to make this work well for employees is we're gonna to have to add essentially the same amount of items in this list, but also tagging along the employee. How we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the existing formula and I'm gonna copy all of that. All of this is already text, so I'm just gonna use the and sign, which is going to let us add more text to this. I'm gonna paste it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab everything in this part of the formula and I'm going to write another substitute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute every comma. So I'm going to substitute every comma in that list for a separator and the employee. And the separator you choose is a little bit critical that you choose one that you like, that it presents well. So we're gonna use a vertical bar in this case, and then we're gonna reference the employee field. And then we're also going to add a comma back in because we can't, this won't work without commas. And I didn't save any of that. So we're gonna say and, paste, copy this, write our substitute formula, paste that back in, Again, we're gonna replace every comma. So the substitute says, what's the old text? So here's our string. What's the old text in the string? What's the new text in the string? So we're gonna put uh, the vertical bar. I think this is what we had before. Okay. So that gets us pretty far. Now I see we're missing a comma here. So we need to add a comma right after this and sign.
And then our last argument in this doesn't have a employee. So now we'll say at the very end of this and and employee. So we'll add that to the formula so that that gets our last one. Now these other ones, they don't have an employee. So we want to say only run this last part of the formula with an and statement. So and date and employee. Okay, and then we also want to throw in, instead of the comma being up here, we don't want a trailing comma in there. Uh, let's see. We want this to be right here. Okay, so now those look like some good lists. So we'll only use all these other ones if there is an employee and a date. You can see these ones don't have dates or employees. This one has a employee but no date, so no reporting for that. So now we'll set up later an automation that will take this and paste it in this. But what you'll see is every time you paste it in there, it will use find a matching or create a new record for that, that uh, item in the comma separated list. So then if we go to the reports table, we're gonna see now there's a lot more groupings in here. And that's because essentially our name field changed. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to create a new name field that doesn't care about the entity, which is the employee in this case. It just has what it had before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new field in here. First thing I'm gonna do is use one to pull out the entity. So we'll reference the name field. Now how we're gonna do this is it's gonna be just like taking a last name. So if we wanna use a last name formula, that would go from the right side. These are all text-based formulas, just like in Excel, if you're familiar with those. We're gonna say from the right of name, and then it will say how many. And so then we're gonna say use the length of name minus where you can find a vertical bar with spaces around it within name. And that should get us almost there. So then we want to just subtract, let's say, we'll try three first. And I should have done two. So we'll subtract two. Okay, now that pulls out Mocha Green, Ben Green. These ones don't matter. So what I'm gonna to do to get rid of those because those aren't entities is I'm gonna say use an if statement. So I just copied all that formula. I'm gonna write an if statement. And I'm gonna just say this, that way I can paste without worrying. And then in the value of false in the if statement, I'm gonna say business name here. So what I'm gonna change this to is I'm gonna use this find formula right here as a replacement for the if. So only if you can find the vertical bar, use this. But if you can't, then default it to business name. And that allows us to do reporting on the business versus every employee individually. So this is usually what I title entity. And now we're gonna create a new name. So the new name will be a similar if statement. So it's going to say if you can find that within name, then go from the left of name and then it says how many and we'll use this formula again. So let's try that out first. So now we have what, what should work for most of these. Um, we just now need to make it work if there's not a vertical bar. And to do that, we just put a comma and that's gonna be name, which is just the name of this first field. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into these other formulas and I'm gonna switch out name with new name and 
switch out this one. So just switching out the name field with that and any others that look to be bad, I would do that there as well. Now what I usually like doing is I like grouping by one field first, which is the entity field, because that's usually what makes the most sense. And currently we have the most data in here based on the business name, but let's go back to the log and add some more reporting records so we can see what this would actually look like. So I'm gonna use Ben Green there. I'm gonna use Mocha Green down here. I'm gonna put in some dates. So there's September. Just put in some random dates. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy all of these paste them in these linked records so we can see what this will look like with just a little bit more data in there. Um, a lot of times, usually most businesses that I work with, they either care about monthly reporting or weekly reporting most frequently, like, or at least like on like a day-to-day -day, day -day side, they'll look at monthly or weekly. So let's choose month. So now we can see reporting based on Ben Green the business and Mocha Green. So now let's add an automation that will keep this linked as days change or as a new one is added. What I like to do here is I like to add another formula field. I could bake this into the reports period, but I'm gonna use a different formula field I'm gonna use an if statement and I'm gonna say if report periods equal reports. Actually, we're just gonna do it like that. So all of these are one, but let's say I changed the date here to the 24th, now it's zero. So that date changed. Or if this had not linked yet, as in I just put in the date, I put in a new date here. These are all zero as well. So I want this automation to trigger off of any time that field is zero. So I usually name it something like that. Sometimes I'll put dev at the beginning of it to make it scary so people don't edit this field. And then we're gonna go to automations up here in the top. So I'm gonna add an automation in here and say when a record matches conditions, it's gonna be in that log table. My condition is gonna say when that field that I just created equals zero. I'm gonna say choose this record. And what I'm gonna have it do is update the record. So I'm gonna choose update the record. It's gonna ask what table do you wanna update the record in? The log table. Now, which record do you want to update in the log table? I want it to update the record that I triggered off of. So I'm gonna use the Airtable record ID using this little blue plus. The Airtable record ID from the first step, which is the one that it triggered off of, is what I wanna use. Then it's gonna say, what fields do you wanna update? I want to update the link to reports. And I want to use the formula report periods. So now if I turn this on, I would name it keep reports in sync. If I go back here to data, let's say, let's say I just delete all of these. You should see it come back in here and relink these, aside from any that I did not have in the past linked. So I'm gonna try pasting all these. Okay, so now they're all in sync. Again, if I change a date, move it to that period, move this one to that period, move this here. You'll see each of these goes from zero back to one, and you'll see the reports get updated as well. Let's see if it changes all of these. It appears to be something going on. We'll try adding an entity here. 
Okay, so it's saying some of these are not linked. So let's see what's going on. So we have a year, quarter, month. It's missing the week, I notice. It has the week here. Interesting. So for some reason, it's missing the week. Normally, I would see this work. I'm not sure why today it's not working. With that one, it worked. Let's see if it works with that one. For some reason, this one doesn't want to link to the week in particular. So just changing some dates around, testing this out. And it seems that it keeps missing the week. Okay, I see the week here. I may have to just save this for a different video on how to keep reports in sync. Typically this has always worked. Today it seems to be a little buggy. Uh, this is the exact system I use in almost all my client spaces. And it gets you reporting like this, where you can count, you can total, so the next step of this, after you get the report synced up by either your business or by whatever entity you choose, that could be a department or an employee or a customer or a vendor, in here you can add fields such as these ones. So let's go ahead and delete these. And the first thing we want, maybe want to do is we want, if we pretend these logs are transactions, we would want to count the transactions. So if you add a field and search for the count field type, this would count the number of transactions. If you want a total value of the transactions, you'd use a rollup field because then you can use a formula. Again, we're going to be looking into the log records and we're going to be looking at the income field and we're going to sum that. So there's total income. And then I think the other one we had in here was a roll up to show the average income per transaction. So if I go use the income field instead of sum down here, I can use average and that gets us what we want. A lot of times these reporting tables are completely necessary when we're doing things like margin as an example, which is a formula because you have to compare two numbers, you can't really use the interface elements to do that well. Uh, usually anytime it's percent things, this works really well, as well as just seeing more advanced reporting. So if you have any questions on this, leave me a comment. But if you're looking for just a more overview of creating these counts and rollups in Airtable, check out this video here in the end screen, and we'll see you there. Bye for now.